Guys, Josh from the Redneck Homestead Channel. I'm here at the uh, main house in my workshop, and uh, we're going to be going through a new project that we're going to be bringing up to the off-grid cabin. So many of you have made comments, remarks, suggestions about the use of a hydraulic ram pump at the off-grid cabin for tapping the spring and pumping water to different places on the property. And although I haven't really remarked back too much on those comments, because I've had so many things going on and I really haven't uh, devoted a lot of focus to that project in recent in the past uh, couple of weeks. Um, I am doing a hydraulic ram pump project and we are going to assemble that ram pump right now. Now for starters, I just have to say thank you and a big shout out to my friend Mike Collinson who has some great videos on ram pumping and for en to Engineer775 who has an amazing series on um, hydraulic ram pumping as well as Joshua Burks. Out of all of the videos I've seen I um, have learned a tremendous amount just about the details. Um, the theory of ram pumping is is actually quite straightforward and quite simple from a physics perspective but when it comes down to the details the ratios in pipe sizes and the um, you know the amount of elevation drop between your drive pipe and your ram pump and then how much head you can achieve in uh, pumping the water to another location. Um, I have made a decision to go with a perfect two to one ratio in pipe sizes. My drive pipe's an inch and a half and then my, um, my water supply pipe, I guess you might call it, or my output pipe is going to be three quarter. So why don't I show you what I have for fittings and we're gonna go ahead and start assembling this thing. Many people have said in their videos that you can build a ram pump uh, you know, with fittings purchased online for about a hundred bucks. I don't think that's possible or at least in the sizes that I'm using. I found that the local plumbing supply, we have a company up here in the Northeast called FW Web and they're a wholesaler and I have an account with them and they're they're a good company, very good company, and they have everything you could possibly imagine. And um, unfortunately, it's going to cost you big, big bucks to buy from them. I found that um, I needed to pick and choose what I bought from them and what I bought online. And while I would prefer to deal with a, a real person and buy from a brick-and-mortar outfit, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. For example, the plumbing house sells these inch-and-a-half swing check valves brass for $67 a piece I need two of them I got these for $21 on Amazon so I was at the supply house and the guy said yeah well you're buying the cheap imported ones I turned the uh, the valve over to or the uh, the check valve over and it said Taiwan on it these are made in I think China or it doesn't matter where they're made they're brass they're um, the tolerances are exactly where they we need them to be, and I'm I'm going to try my luck and save seventy or sixty six percent or so on uh, these cheap Chinese ones. This valve here, it's an inch and a half ball valve, at the supply house was big bucks. It was thirty seven dollars. They said, well, you know, the lead this is lead free and this and that. Of course, you can see my made in China here. Well, to buy this thing on Amazon, I think I paid 17 bucks for it. So to me, the distinction in price is clear. I have to buy certain expensive things online because it just doesn't make sense. Remember guys, and you know this, because I've said it a thousand times, I'm not doing any of this to make any money. I'm not in this for profit. I'm in this, this is all hobby stuff for me. So yeah, I'm improving my property and yeah, I'm having a blast doing it. And yeah, I'm providing some recreation and some learning, but you know, it just makes sense to cut some corners where it makes the most sense. Now these unions, same story. These were like this inch and a half union was like six bucks on Amazon and it was 20 bucks at the supply house. Um, I think I bought this at the supply house just because it, it made sense, whatever. But anyways, let's just kind of go through a real rough inventory. The first thing is I got some uh, double thickness tape here. I got several rolls of it that I bought at Lowe's at a really good deal. 
I don't know, a couple of years ago. So I'm going to be using that for the larger fittings. And we'll use some uh, white thread tape, single thickness thread tape for the smaller fittings. But um, so that's that. We've got a pressure gauge here. We want to be able to see what our output pressure is. After we pump the water, we want to know what kind of delivery pressures we got. Um, these are a couple of unions. The input union is inch and a half, the output's three quarter for that perfect uh, two to one ratio. Two, uh, two on the input, one on the output. We need two swing check valves, inch and a half. One is going to be providing the ramming effect, the other one is going to be providing the uh, one way check of the water so it doesn't flow backwards. We need an input valve to start and stop the um, supply of water from the spring head or from the kinetic water source and that is inch and a half and then we have the output shutoff valve which is three quarter. Now this assembly right here these are just some fittings that are going to be necessary to install the pressure gauge. I've got a 90 degree three quarter elbow. I've got a, a three way T all at three quarters on each, uh, on each output. We've got a bushing inch and a half to three quarter to reduce after um, we pump the water, we need to reduce down to three quarter, oh, excuse me, after we accept the input from the drive pipe and uh, make it past the check valve, we need to reduce here. This here in my hand, I picked it up because um, it's really not entirely relevant to the ram pump, but I just grabbed this. This is for a garden hose. If I wanted to just uh, quickly connect a garden hose to the output of the ram pump, this fitting will do that. I have two three-way T's that are inch and a half on all of the uh, on all of the points. We have a whole host of three-quarter and inch and a half nipples to connect all the uh, all the uh, pieces together. And then we have some miscellaneous PVC. The, this is three inch, and this is a three inch to inch and a half. And then this here is an inch and a half thread to weld. And of course, we need the pipe for that, which I have in the other room and some of the other pipe is uh, in the basement of one of the other properties. So I gotta grab that, but we're not gonna get to that right now. And I'll explain what that's for when we get to it. Again, I wanna really thank Engineer 775, Mike Collinson, and Joshua Burks for their great videos and for all of the, uh, the enjoyment and the education that I've gotten from all three of you guys, so thanks a lot. And I've gotten to know Mike through YouTube um, over the last year and what a great guy so thumbs up to you man um, hope I can keep my ram pump going as long as you have yeah, actually I hope I can get it going let's start with that we'll get it going first and then we'll uh, see if we can have a competition to see you can run theirs longer <laughs> um, I have adopted kind of a hybrid of all three designs favoring I think the simplicity and the modularity of Engineer 775. His pump um, has substantially more pieces or significantly more pieces than other pumps that I've seen, but there are reasons and Engineer 775 goes into explicit and just painful detail about some of the physics and the mathematics that go into ramp pumping or behind ramp pumping. So I would say you should really check Engineer 775's videos out. There's no sense in doing, in reinventing the wheel, or in this case, reinventing the pump um, by creating videos that explain all the science. And I am definitely a science head. I love, I love physics. Actually, my dad was a physics professor for almost 50 years. So I kind of grew up loving the uh, sciences and mathematics. And uh, of course, being a, a software guy, um, you know, pr problem solving with math and those types of things is, uh, I guess, in my blood. But I'm not here to do that. I'm here to get away from that and to just do the stuff that gets my hands dirty once in a while. So let's put this thing together. 
I'm gonna do a dry fit first before I wind this up with tape, and uh, we will uh, then take the whole thing apart and tape it up and uh, torque it down and make sure everything is uh, holding water. All right, so that's what it looks like fully assembled. Again, I've not thread taped anything and it's not torqued down, so uh, it's very loose, but this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. And I'm not gonna bore you with the process of taking it apart, taping it, and then uh, the finished assembly. But let's go through all the parts real quick. So we have a union first. At, um, this is the drive pipe here. This is where the water supply is gonna come in. So in, in our case, we have a spring and we're going to drop the spring into a cistern and then we're going to pipe the drive pipe to the base of the system, cistern and then drop it six to 10 vertical feet over a length of about 25 to 40 feet, depending on the terrain when I actually get there, see, see if we can actually uh, get it to around 40 feet. And um, it's gonna supply, it's gonna plug right in here to the union. And then, of course, we have the valve to turn the water onto the system or turn it off. And then what happens is the water comes in and has to go up here first, okay, after the system has been primed and started. The water will have nowhere to go but up. Now you'll notice here that this swing check valve, otherwise known as a flap valve, it is oriented with the flap down. And you can always tell what direction the water flow is supposed to go by the arrow that's on the side of the valve. In this case, it's pointing down. So you might ask, well, why are you pointing it down? Isn't that going the wrong way? Well, no, not in this case. The first swing check flap valve needs to go down. The theory is this. Once the pump has been primed and started, we need to create a ramming effect, a hammering effect with the water. So as the water is supplied, the water's gonna travel up here and when there's a time of lower pressure, the water is going to escape until the water pressure builds up enough and it shuts the valve. Once that flapper is shut, it's going to hammer or um, force the water down and along the system further through this swing check valve, which you can see is pointing in the correct direction. So then if you can imagine the flap in here swings this way and never comes back past vertical, the water gets hammered through this valve here, opens the valve, allows some water through, and forces it along through the system. Now as the water is forced through the system, it reaches this T here. Now this T I don't have completed yet, but what we're going to be doing is installing a, for lack of a better term, a pressure tank. It would be um, an expansion tank on your heating system, otherwise known as a pressure vessel of some sort. Now there are a lot of different designs, and I could go to Lowe's or to the supply house and simply buy a pressure tank, but they're 80 bucks to start with, number one. And number two, they rust like crazy, and this thing is gonna be out in the woods, you've seen the woods, you know where it's going, and I don't particularly wanna to have to attend to this thing when it rusts and um, decays over time. So what we're gonna do is take a piece of three inch PVC pipe, about two, two and a half feet long, and it's gonna sit up about this high, and I'm gonna fill it with this bicycle inner tube that I have in this bag, which I bought at Savers, which is this uh, kind of like a Goodwill secondhand shop. It just happened to be sitting there and it was like two bucks for it. So I grabbed it, I'm like, wow, that's perfect, uh, perfect timing. You fill that about halfway and it creates kind of like a, uh, a, a negative pressure um, effect on the water. As the water fills the pressure tank, the balloon or the bicycle tube wants to continue to maintain it's full inflated and full natural state. So it's forcing itself back down, which is pushing the water with the help of the pressure that's coming from this direction. It pushes it into 
this pipe that is only three quarters of an inch. So what we want to do is we don't care necessarily about maintaining the same flow rate. We want to increase the pressure. And that's why we reduce the size of the pipe because we, when you reduce the pipe, the same amount of water is going to be coming through here. It's just going to slow the flow down and I don't have all of the calculations done. It's going to slow the flow, but it's going to do so at a much higher pressure. And it's kind of like take a garden hose, open the spigot all the way up and you've got a, a quite a bit of flow coming out your garden hose. And then you kink the garden hose slightly, you increase the pressure. You've all put your finger on the edge on the end of a garden hose. Um, and that increases the pressure. If you want to get some mud off your car or your truck, you just put your finger over the edge of it. All that's doing is restricting the flow, out the output flow, while the input flow remains the same. Well, that's essentially what we're doing here. And because we want to measure the pressure, just for purposes of understanding what we can do with the water before it actually gets there, I've installed this little um, pressure gauge my camera, there we go, it's focusing. I couldn't find one that registered less than 100 pounds. I don't expect to ever get more than 40 pounds, to be honest with you. Although I haven't tested this particular ram pump, so I don't know what the flow is going to, actually the pressure is going to look like. I anticipate it's not going to be anywhere near um, 40 and probably no less than 20, 25. That's my hope. If I have 25 pounds of pressure, I can do all the work I need to do with water. Um at that property for the foreseeable future. So continuing along after the uh, pressure is registered, and of course there is some economic overhead, and I don't mean financial economic, but the economy of the system here, you lose some economy in um, all of these different fittings, in distances, in 90s. When your water needs to travel a 90, yeah, it's diverting, and uh, th there is some economic impact there but not enough to deter us from making these, um, these uh, sort of judgment calls. Here, there's very little impact in putting a pressure gauge. You can see that's pretty, pretty loose, it's just sitting there. Finally, we get to, or almost finally, we get to the output shutoff valve, which is instrumental in starting the system, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Then after we get this thing pumping, it's going to send the water out through this union, and right now I've just loosely installed this garden hose adapter. One thing I realize now that I didn't mention, you absolutely need all brass or a combination of brass and galvanized. Do not use black pipe. It's going to rust like crazy. It's going to rust fast, especially if you're in an outside environment, harsh environment like we are. Um, Summer can be a little more forgiving, but just the humidity alone will rust the heck out of your black pipe. Don't use it. It's a waste of your money and it's a waste of your time. Spend a little extra, get the um, galvanized, which really isn't that much more money, and, uh, and or all brass fittings. Bra As you can see, I didn't go all brass. It's too much money. And um, But that said, good luck. I hope you try this project. I will keep you posted with the next step. And uh, hopefully we'll be uh, cooking with water soon. If you liked this video, I would appreciate it very much if you'd give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed to this crazy adventure, I would appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button right now. We are just crossing into 3,500 subscribers, which is un just unbelievable to me. It's remarkable. I can't believe it, actually. Um, you know, there are some channels that are stalled at a few hundred or a thousand or whatever and we just keep chugging along and there are other channels that are going crazy but what's so very interesting to me is that i look at the number of views that our channel has gotten and we've gotten over a third of a million views at this point which i can't believe a third of a million people i mean that's like a a decent sized city in new hampshire actually the biggest city in new hampshire is only like a hundred thousand people so take three of those and have them all watch one of our videos. That's how many views we've gotten. And we're growing like crazy. Not that our goal is to grow this thing, but it's nice to reach more people. And uh, we hope we're reaching you and that you enjoy some of the content that we're putting out. And uh, that's about all I got for you today. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks, till the next video. 
All right, friends, this is the finished hydraulic ram pump. Ready to roll. It's all taped up, torqued down, and uh, ready for connections. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Stay tuned for the next video when we go and set this thing up.